Blade loses another director. Is it a shock that we learn something from this? And what we learn from this is Spider-Man took a long time from 1970, 60, 80, 90s. Spider-Man took Sam Raimi and the writers that James Vanderbilt and David Coep and all those guys. Spider-Man took till Columbia Pictures and TriStar and Sony and all of them came together and Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire they were going to do James Cameron, Leonardo DiCaprio, and they went Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire. And then it was so amazing that Spider-Man 1 came out, and Spider-Man 2 came out, and Spider-Man 3 ruined it, but we still were able to salvage Spider-Man 3 with No Way Home. The Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2, Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home. But guess where we are now in Blade? There has only been two Blade movies in the entirety of Blade that have ever kicked ass. And that's Blade and Blade 2. And Blade Trinity, while not bad, doesn't make any damn sense. Because we're supposed to see Deadpool, see Ryan Reynolds. So here's, so here's, so here's our problem. Here's where we are in the Marvel Universe. We had everything up to Endgame. And it kicked ass. Then all of a sudden we said, okay, let's make Disney Plus. And we had WandaVision, which worked because Disney Plus was like, all right, we're going to be able to take what would be a movie and spend all this money on a movie. And instead of you seeing all this stuff in a movie, you're seeing it like it's a, like Disney Plus. So a lot of that worked for characters that had a lot of story and a lot of characters. So something like Daredevil which would work as a movie, but work even better as a, as a Netflix series. But then not everything worked. Not everything worked. It just was a matter of like She-Hulk. She-Hulk I liked and I saw it, and it was probably the greatest visual effects that you could possibly put to She-Hulk, and the budget was huge. But then it was like, um, this is not going there. It's like... They literally had to stop She-Hulk to say, oh, by the way, make fun of Marvel right now. Stop everything to make fun of the creator of Marvel. That's like if you're watching Spider-Man 2 and they go, hey, let's talk about Stan Lee right now instead of Dr. Octopus. Why the fuck would we talk about Stan Lee? Not as a cameo that's awesome. Well, as a, oh, let's just, hi, I'm the creator of Spider-Man. When I told you to fight Dr. Octopus, and you're like, when you write shit like that, you're like, oh, it's because of Deadpool, right? It's because we're, we're hanging out with Deadpool or we're, we're the X-Men. or No, it's because they were just like, this is stupid. I haven't figured this out. So let me just write Stan Lee, the creator of Spider-Man, talking to Spider-Man. And it's weird to think that in Captain Marvel, one of the most amazing characters that has never really, we never give a shit about her, and she's had the worst movie, the worst Marvel, the Marvels is the worst movie. They had Stan Lee. They literally had Stan Lee freaking... How do I explain this? They had Stan Lee freaking be mall rats. So the Marvel Universe, which was talked about in Mall Rats with Kevin Smith, who's a creator and watches comic books. They're saying they're a comic book. I don't even want to get into the meta of that, but it's like, it was supposed to be a funny little joke, but just doing stupid shit like that, I don't like that. So anyway, and this was a rant on Blade, but I go, Blade is stupid because even John Campion and everybody, they're like, well, what's going to happen with Blade? Because we have the Eternals and this and that. Let's be real. There was Iron Man 1. And I hate, hate, hate that we're trying to, 
Captain Marvel is trying to say, no, I'm the first Avenger. Captain America is the first Avenger. There's even before Captain America. I don't give a shit how you do it. But when I have to watch the movies, I'm watching Iron Man 1 all the way to Endgame. You want to know why? Because that's the arc. It started with Iron Man. It ended with Iron Man and Endgame. And now we have WandaVision. And where did WandaVision take us? The multiverse. The multiverse. Why are we looking at someone who writes something and says, okay, I'm going to start with like a door. But then the door, when you open it, it's a helicopter. All right. So now you open the door to a house and there's a helicopter in there. And then the helicopter shrinks and there's Ant-Man. Ah, there was a helicopter in the house because Ant-Man had a pin particle for a helicopter and he's in there and the helicopter went in the house. Okay. And that's the first thing we ever see of Marvel. A door that opened and we see a helicopter and it's Ant-Man. And you look at that and you go, well, that does kind of make sense. The pin particle is the quantum realm. And Ant-Man was one of the first Avengers. Ant-Man was around way back when he was with his wife. And Ant-Man was one of the first superheroes. Ant-Man, in the Ant-Man movie, which we all accept, was real. He fought the enemy. And everything was done at that time. So we look at something like the Fantastic Four. We look at something at that time and we go, oh, the Fantastic Four could be set in the 60s because of Ant-Man. That's cool. But we look at that and we go, okay, well, because of the quantum realm, the, the, the Fantastic Four, Galactus, or whatever, and we look at all that stuff, we go, cool, but you know what You know what Iron Man was? May 2008. Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, living in our world, S.H.I.E.L.D. was there, there was no helicarrier yet, there was no Tesseract, there was no Infinity Stones, there was the Incredible Hulk. There was Thor living in, in Asgard, off in space. There were the Guardians off in space. Everybody was, was away from each other. Nothing brought everybody together. But Iron Man built the suit that would allow him to change our world. Iron Man built the suit. Tony Stark went from... A large world where he goes, you've stepped into a larger world. You just don't know it yet. And that was it. So now Blade. If we're going to look at Blade, which is a rated R movie, why the fuck are we doing that? What kind of writers do we have? What kind of fucking producers do we have that go, oh, by the way, because Blade was rated R, your movie's rated R. Imagine if I tell Sam Raimi, yeah, Spider-Man's rated R. So uh, make sure the Green Goblin, like, blows people up and, like, you know, at, in the high school, make sure that Peter Parker's, like, having sex and, like, the kids are cussing and, like, make sure that, like, there's sex and cussing and, and gore and, and, like, make it, make it like, you know, make it like the Breakfast Club, but, like, a lot of bad words and, like, a, like a kind of, like a, like a, like a rated R John Hughes and it's, like, uh, I could have done it like Spider-Man Homecoming. I could have made it that instead of you seeing a pumpkin bomb blow everybody up and kill them in five seconds and blood everywhere and guts like it's hostile, you don't see that stuff. And it's implied from the villain is evil. And that maybe, just maybe, Peter Parker's a kid and he doesn't say, fuck you. To everybody every two minutes. Just because he can and it's rated R. But we can have a cool fun movie with a cool kind of across the Spider-Verse kind of feeling. With the animation and the fun. We can make it fun. And we don't need Spider-Man to be like, hey motherfucker. Fuck out of here. Don't talk to my fucking girlfriend you son of a fucking piece of shit motherfucker piece of... Like, we don't need all that. 
We don't need all that for Spider-Man. We could have one word, holy fuck, and it ends. We could accept that the world is rated R, but they don't act that way. Like, you're a total penis breath. Stuff like that. You guys are losers. What if she says, you guys are pussies? See the difference? What if Zendaya was like, you guys are pussies? Because I can fuck the shit out of both of you, and you guys don't want to fuck me at all. You guys are gay faggots. Say that in a rated R movie. Eh, you'd laugh, you'd smile, maybe we'd be there in a Spider-Man world, but you go, why is Zendaya saying, you guys are faggots, you don't want to fuck me. I have a good pussy. What? That's what Blade is... Blade is... Blade. If Blade is rated R, it's because of the violence. It's because when he shoots people, they bleed. But guess who he shoots? Blade. And here's the thing. Vampires drink blood. Vampires drink blood. But guess what? Whose blood are they going to drink? People we don't want to see or care about. Are they drinking the blood of Pepper Potts and ripping her arm out of her socket and biting her face off? No, that's not going to happen to Pepper Potts. And if it's happening to someone else, like the Vampire Diaries did, or other characters used to do in the Vampire Diaries, or all these other shows like Twilight, we don't care. We don't care. Look at Twilight. Twilight is this big franchise. You don't see anything. It's all like, I'm a vampire. I'll rip you apart. And the girl is a girl who's young and doesn't know any better. So now here's a movie with Blade, and we think, oh, well, you know, there was Blade with Wesley Snipes, and he was a badass, and he said, uh, uh, some motherfucker's always trying to ice skate up a hill, and, and he was a badass. But guess what now, Blade? You're in a world with She-Hulk and Daredevil. You're in a world with the Punisher. You're in a world with Thor. You're in a world with Loki and the time variant agencies. You're in a world with Ant-Man. Ant-Man could take a building the size of the World Trade Center and shrink it down to a keychain. Do we really need Blade to be this psychotic motherfucker? And be like, motherfucker, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, bitch. I'll fuck you up, motherfucker. Get your fucking face out of it. Like, no. We want to see him cuss eventually and build to a rated R movie or have an unrated cut and laugh because Blade is funny being black, but it's a comedic ferocity. It's a comedic kind of, I'm Chris Tucker being annoying and you're Wesley Snipes being the badass Blade. Bad Boys is a great movie. We always love Bad Boys because it was rated R. But at the end of the day, I want to see a rated R Blade, and I do accept that Blade is one of those characters that he uses a gun, he uses blades, he's called Blade, but we can't have Blade be pussified in PG-13, but if he's rated R, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to be in any movie other than with Deadpool and Wolverine. So you got Wolverine, Deadpool, Blade, and then you go, okay, well he's Blade, He's never going to really be hurt the way that Deadpool and Wolverine are because then he has to regenerate. You can't have Wolverine stab Blade all the time and then he goes, oh, I'm a vampire, I'm a daywalker, I get better, which he does. So then we're like, well, then that's really all we're doing. We're showing a guy who never feels pain. He doesn't get his fingers cut off. He doesn't get his nose cut off. He doesn't get his eyeballs ripped out of his socket. He's not fighting in a crazy 88 Kill Bill style. So what do we care? So if we were to do this movie as Kill Bill, and Bill was a vampire, and Blade is the guy trying to cross these people off his list, that movie was rated R, and it didn't have any sex, but it had a lot of violence and bad words, and it was cool, and it was cool. The stylistically, it was a cool comic book version. But now you tell me that you put Spider-Man with the bride, that's a different movie. It's a different movie when Spider-Man is in the battle of the crazy 88. When you put Spider-Man in that scene, 
you're seeing the perspective of Spider-Man and Revenge. It's about a kid who's from Queens, and he used to go to high school, and he's got friends, and he's seeing a woman that basically assassins killed on her wedding day and murdered. But now he's Spider-Man with webbing, and he's the most amazing. He's the amazing Spider-Man. He's not just Spider-Man. He's the amazing. You've seen him do amazing things in video games that you play with the, with a thumbstick, and two seconds that he's doing, he can do all that in the battle. So the bride just has a samurai sword, and he can web that samurai sword, and it's webbed. Think about that. Spider-Man and Kill Bill is a different movie. Superman and Kill Bill is a different movie. But Blade in Kill Bill is a rated R movie. And there are vampires and there are Crazy 88 and Yakuza and it's a rated R movie. But it has to be written by Quentin Tarantino. Otherwise we don't care. Or Guillermo del Toro. I honestly think that the number one reason, and this is why I need to be working on Blade, me, I'm pitching myself, hurry up, get me Marvel, because it's just getting embarrassing and you're losing, you're spending money, but you're going to be losing so much that it's crazy because you're hiring these people who are hacks and they bust their ass, but they're like, you're not really doing Iron Man 1. Remember, Iron Man 1 had terrorists, and after that, they stopped being about terrorists. You want to know why? Because the world had Iron Man. And Thor came in. I mean, d yes, there was Iron Man 3 and it was terrorism, but it was really the Mandarin. There's really, I mean, there's a forest where a digital creature is walking around and it's Shang-Chi. What the hell are you telling me that Shang-Chi exists and Daredevil exists and these characters exist Hell, Valkyrie exists. Thor went to outer space. The Guardians of the Galaxy exist. They're all evil and ravaging. But Yondu, you're telling me that if Yondu was hanging out with Blade, what would they do? Hey, motherfucker, you look blue. And if you whistle at me, I'll kill you. That doesn't... Why does he always have to be one expression of who he is? I'm Wesley Snipes. I'm a badass. I'm basically Wesley Snipes the whole movie. I'm Wesley Snipes. I'm a motherfucker. I'll kill you. Like, what is he, Mr. T? Is he Mike Tyson? You know, all that talking is bullshit. Why don't we get a person who actually is a philosophy? Think of him like Magneto. Why don't we think of why don't we think of Blade like Magneto? Blade goes into a room to play chess with Xavier. Hey motherfucker, move the pieces around. Mm, let's try that again. Xavier, this school was built for people who were different. But I can tell you, it will not protect them from me, the daywalker. See how stupid that is? That sounds stupid. But try it again. Xavier, this school was built for those who were different. But now it's come for them to stand united. Okay. See how different that is? Then, motherfucker, I need these kids. And y'all better be fucking ready to fight these vampires. Because they're going to fuck you up. Like, it's just... We're looking at Blade as a Wesley Snipes. So I think we need to establish, who is Blade? Who is Blade? Does he have sex with a woman? Yes. Who is he? First of all, he's old. So that's a problem. He's old. He's not a teenager. He's not like kind of a man. He's not a baby. He's already an adult. He's already an adult. So we're seeing him towards, we're seeing him at the age of Tony Stark. And Tony Stark, we knew who he was, but he went on an arc. What's Blade's arc? I fuck up vampires. At the end, I fuck up vampires. They're basically writing him like Wesley Snipes. So Mahershala Ali has to write it like, what have I been doing while Iron Man was making the Iron Man suit? 
I've been fucking up vampires. I've been hiding from vampires. I've been a day walker. I've been kicking ass. I've been walking around like Matt Murdock and kicking ass. I've been in London. I've been around. I've been hiding. I've been Indiana Jones. I've been fake. Blade has never been to our world. He's never been in our world. The same way that Wolverine is another Wolverine from another universe, Blade has never looked at the marvels of space. He's never been into outer space on Vormir. When the decimation happened, he wasn't around. He didn't he doesn't know anything about Thanos. He's just like Venom when Venom showed up in No Way Home. He's come to our world the same way, the same way that Dr. Octopus showed up in our world and we he didn't know who the hell anything was, Blade shows up. That's the place to take this character. But now the difference is, this is where the problem is. Blade has come here and in his world, the vampires have taken over. In his world, the vampires, without a blade, the only daywalker to stop them, he was here, so they took over his world. Now, is that important for the movie? No, but it's important for sequels in the future and for another blade, Wesley Snipes, and other blades and other future movies. But we can establish that Blade thinks, well, the vampires took over already. I wasn't there. So I had to come here, and what does he have? He has Saffron Calder as a woman. Maybe a, a, a child. He has his own life here. He's a daywalker living here. And he still kicks ass and fights and does stuff. He's an Iron Man kicking ass, doing some cool stuff. But people don't really know much about Blade. The same way Spider-Man was just kind of an unknown, kicking ass, and Iron Man found him. Someone has to find Blade. And bring him into the Avengers initiative. Is it Nick Fury? That would be cool. Black on black. Black Panther. Wakandans. Who knows? The point is, Blade had his world and the vampires. The vampires. The vampires took over in his world. This is not a Wesley Snipes world. This is his world and it's gone. So what did he leave back there? Why, why was it so important for him to fight for that world and he lost? And now the question isn't, well, that world was lost, but now they come, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough that they got to his world. Now they're coming for this world. So you have Doctor Strange, everybody, and you think, oh, there's all these people. You don't need me. You don't need me to fight this fight. But Blade fights. He fights because he's a hero and he fights. That's the humanity. He has to regain his humanity. He's, he's out of it. So he has to come and blade to some shit and kick some ass with these new kind of terrible vampires. Something that could be rated R, but it's not important. You don't need to make it rated R and have all this visual effect fighting. You have to make it simple. Simple stakes. And the question is, what will Blade do when they finally come for our world? He's Blade the Vampire Slayer. So what's the vampire that he's got to kill? Deacon Frost? Someone else? Apocalypse? Think of this story and really work on it. I'd love to do it, but they're not paying me, and I'm not in a room with comics and stuff. But that's what you need to do. You need to establish that Blade is in our world, and the vampires have fucking abilities that are daywalker awesome. You know, it's one thing to fight Loki because he's a god, but what is it like fighting a vampire? Is it just getting silver bullets or or swords or or guns? How do these vampires fight someone like Iron Man? Cuz you see a show like True Blood and it really seems like damn, some of these motherfuckers are scary. I think if you take the true blood aspect of vampires that show true blood and you take how powerful they were and how they could make people and do all that stuff, that's something that should be examined by Blade 
and Blade is the vampire slayer who knows how to fight them. Whereas we think, ah, we're powerful, we're a time variant agency, we're this. They're smart too. They're Magneto. Remember, Magneto is a badass. You, but in X-Men, it took Wolverine to get his ass kicked by him. Everybody wanted to fight Magneto, but they couldn't take him on because him and Mystique and Sabretooth and Toad got together. So that was X-Men 1. You take that approach for Blade, Blade and the, the vampires that come together to bring the portal that will open so that vampires can slowly sleep through. That's a fear. Once a couple vampires get in here, they bite, and like COVID, it spreads. The vampires are everywhere now. They're constantly feeding on us, and it'll never end. That's your story. But you do later go into, we got Wesley Snipes, all the worlds, all the characters, everything in the comics, Morbius, everything, Spider-Man. All that later comes into play. But you keep that idea that the same way as Doctor Who, Doctor Who fights for everyone, and his planet was destroyed. Gallifrey was destroyed. Same with Doctor, same with Doctor Who. Gallifrey was destroyed. It's a, it's a whole story. There's all these stories in Doctor Who. You've got now a amazing Time Lord, Time Variant, Power, Blade. He's a badass. And then you build the bad words, the cussing, the killing, the rated Rness later in bigger movies. That's what you do. Don't fuck up Blade. And stop thinking about him like, move them fucking chess pieces, Xavier. And take them fucking wheels and shove them up your ass. Like, no, he's not a black guy. He's like Doctor Who. You think about Doctor Who, you think he's pretty much a badass, except for the woman and, and black version that were terrible. But you look at the other versions, and he was amazing in the acting and the, and the variants and the way that he could play. We all want to see those the, the, the Eccleston all the way to Capaldi, all of them meet, and even the War Doctor and all the ones that died who were actors, we want to see all the greatness of all the Doctor Whos. The woman and the black one were like, oh, well, she it's a woman blade. No, uh, Daywalker became a woman. Uh, some mutant just kind of touched him, and now he became a woman. Oh, and now he's black, but he's gay black, and, you know, or no, he's white. He's white blade. Instead of being a, a black blade, some mutant touched him, and now he's white blade. Stuff that you could do for an episode for one day and be funny but they did it for a whole series, and it was like, this is terrible. Capaldi, all of them worked. Blade, we love you. Mahershala, the reason it took five years is because it took me to come along, and I've got like 20. The Midnight Suns would be amazing. The Strike Force, someone like Bucky. You do not need a TV show. Blade is as good as Iron Man. He's greater than Iron Man. He's a James Bond. He's a Doctor Who. Keep him going. You could do Christmas. You could do Halloween. You could do whatever you want with Blade. Mahershala is already old, but Black Don't Crack and like an Eddie Murphy, Axel Foley. We're going from today's Beverly Hills Cop, but Beverly Hills Cop has been established. And there's always black actors who can play Blade from Jamie Foxx to anyone. And Jamie Foxx was Electro, so he's not. But you can do anything with these characters. You can bring in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because you have a vampire, which you know you got to kill, because the thing is not going to take orders from you, and no one's around. Blade is there to be ready to fucking destroy the vampires. Now, how? And the characters like Ant-Man, what is he going to do? What is Ant-Man going to do? You, you know how stupid it would be if Ant-Man became a giant Ant-Man? What if there was a giant vampire? Think about that. Giant vampire. Now, that's stupid, but you go, oh, if you did that, that's the Marvel Universe. There's a vampire. He's the Morbius. Now he's a giant, the same way Ant-Man was. Hmm. Think about it. Just that's what Blade is living in. It's a Doctor Who episode of this is a giant vampire. Blade can't fight that. He can't just take his sword out, kill Bill, and kill the giant. But if it's a Deacon Frost, if it's one of the biggest badass saber tooth kind of villain Magneto giants you're like holy shit blade's gotta fight him and kill him that's the movie let's go